Okay, so we're going to fire up this janky that we've built for the uh, build guide for the first time. Um, I've got the level rolled all the way down. I've got the tone rolled all the way up. I've got the gain rolled all the, rolled all the way down. The jank is rolled all the way down. The feedback is rolled all the way down and the time is rolled all the way down. Um, and I've got the long read head selected by the toggle switch. Um, the reason I've got the janky the wrong way up on the desk is it makes it easy to uh, lift the lid away if I want to access the tape deck, which I'm going to do uh, shortly. But uh, for this first test, I've just got a guitar plugged in. I've got the power uh, plugged in and turned on. I've got the out connected to an amplifier and I've got a momentary foot switch plugged into the uh, remote jack. And uh, the dry signal for the guitar sounds like this. And what we're going to do is just press and release the foot switch to bring the echo effect in. But we should find that whilst the motor comes to life and everything uh, starts spinning and moving uh, nicely, we should find that there's no echo effect yet. And that's because we need to turn up the level control slowly to bring in the, uh, to bring in the repeats. And there we go. So you can hear there there's one repeat. You can also hear there's a, there's a ticking sound. So if you're hearing that, what that means is that the tape loop isn't quite right. What, what that clicking sound is, is it's the splice point of the tape where the tape has been stuck together. Whenever that splice point passes the reed head, you're getting that clicking. Uh, the way to solve that uh, is to replace the tape loop and try and make a, a cleaner join where that, uh, where that tape loop is spliced. I think because I was kind of making the loop on camera and trying to kind of you know talk whilst I was doing it that the this loop that's in here is not is not ideal uh, you'll always get a little bit of that ticking sound I find but you can certainly reduce it to the point where it's not a nuisance um, this is very loud so that tape loop needs to come out and be replaced but it's a good enough tape loop for us to do the rest of our testing with so so let's move ahead with that you can hear that there's there's one one uh, one repeat there which is good. As we bring up the feedback control, we should start to hear more repeats. So there's more repeats in there. As we bring up the gain, the signal should start to get stronger and a bit more driven. And we can change the tone by rolling off this. You can actually hear, as soon as I do that, you lose some of that noise. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that we like the, having this tone control in the front here, so that you can kind of back that off to not only to, to make the repeats warmer, but you can actually filter out some of that noise with it as well. And it will get very, very warm if you roll this all the way down. It gets kind of very, very crunchy and warm like that. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it for that head. We should find that uh, if we switch the toggle switch to the S position, the suddenly the delay time is very short. And that's because we've switched to the short read head, which is over here, just underneath the enclosure lid. Um, in fact, if I lift the lid away very carefully, I can show you it. It's, it's just here. It's just this head here. There we go. And, um, and so to make this a bit easier to test, we're gonna just turn the motor right down. And we should find that the motor, the reel and, every, and the tape speed slows right down. You'll notice that when the motor is running slowly, 
uh, that the sound is a lot less stable. Um, as, you, as you turn the motor down, you're gonna get a lot more uh, artifacts warbling and that kind of thing going on because the motor is struggling to pull the tape loop through the machine. And that's why we have the two heads. You have the short head for doing not only short sounds, but also you can get very warbly, glitchy sounds by running the motor sh uh, very, very slow, but still getting an echo time that's kind of musically usable. And then you can use the long head to get much longer echoes, but also you can get a, a sort of medium tempo echo, but at a high tape speed, so it's very stable. You suddenly notice that because the motor is running very quickly, all of that warble has gone because the motor is now, now has a, a much, much more torque to pull all that uh, tape through the machine cleanly and fight the friction between the tape loop and, and various bits of the machine that the tape loop is coming into contact with. Uh, most, most importantly, the heads. Um, so one thing you can do uh, is if you want to get a much more, much more stability, if you're finding that at the low tape speeds that it's just too, too janky for your tastes, then what you can do is you can uh, you can adjust the amount of tension that's in the in the machine and the way that you do that is the the easiest way is to back the heads out of the tape um, so you would adjust the head adapters so that the mounting holes of the heads are back slightly so that you're pressing the heads less into the tape to get less contact between the tape and the heads obviously you can't back them out too far because then you're not going to be able to read and write signal to the tape but you can certainly adjust those a little bit to get just a little bit less friction and it will take out some of that warble. Another thing you can do is just change the contact pads. We find that contact pads have different thicknesses and so if you change the pads out for a thinner pad then it's going to apply less pressure to the tape. It's going to push the tape uh, it's softer into the, into, the head of the, into the face of the head and so there's going to be less friction there. Um, and so again, that's going to allow the tape to move cleaner at those lower speeds. Uh, another thing you can do is just post-process your 3D printed parts a little bit. Uh, sand very lightly the underside of the reel clamp and the top of the rims that the reels run on and get those as smooth as you can. Uh, and then there's going to be less friction there. We've also experimented with using uh, lubricants on, those, on the edges of those rims in order to... Um, in order to just reduce that friction further and had a little bit of success with that. But you have to be very, very, uh, you have to use a very, very small amount of lubricant because if you, if you add too much lubricant, if you add goops of lubricant on there, it actually does the opposite and it actually adds friction. So you need to make sure that you use just a very tiny amount. And the same can be said for underneath the bearings where the bearings sit on the 3D printed plastic. You can add just a tiny, tiny amount of, of lubricant there just to, to make that uh, have a little less friction and make those those bearings spin a little easier and that will that will make the tape loop run a little bit smoother as well. Um, I'm just going to turn that off but it looks like uh, this machine is is working functionally fine. Um, I might experiment with just adjusting these heads here. Uh, I'll just show you quickly how you do that. Currently I've got the heads, uh, it looks like actually I've got them not entirely bolted down uh, to the adapters. Um, already but basically what you can do is just loosen off the screw on this side of the head just just a turn or two just so that it's not clamping the head down to the head adapter and then adjust the sprung uh, screw here and what the, what happened is as you loosen this you'll see that the the head kind of tilts up and down like that on the adapter and you can adjust both the azimuth and by loosening the other screw a little bit more you can actually adjust the height of the head very slightly and, uh, and by doing that, by moving those heads around, you can get a weaker and stronger signal. You can adjust the equalization of uh, how much uh, high end you're actually getting uh, in those read and write heads. And, and basically just to adjust the sound of the machine just a little bit. It can be very tricky to get things just right. I'm usually pretty happy if we're just getting a nice strong signal like we are here. Um, I, I kind of take that as a win. Um, you can also uh, adjust the uh, treble and bass controls uh, that we feed on the way into the tape. Uh, a common thing to do is to boost the treble control, which is uh, this one. 
if you boost that all the way up, that's going to have the effect of reducing the noise. Because if you think about it, if you're boosting the treble all the way up, then to get the same sound on the way off of tape, you would roll this tone control down a little bit. And by doing that, as you saw a little earlier, that reduces the noise. So by boosting the treble on the way in and then just rolling some of that treble off on the front panel, you're actually uh, reducing the amount of noise but getting the same uh, the same equalization of the guitar signal itself. Uh, so you can play with that. What I find is um, you can also adjust the bass control and the treble control. Sometimes I actually like to leave the treble control uh, sort of roughly in the middle, maybe slightly boosted, and actually bass, uh, bass boost it. So just turn the bass up a bit. And the reason I like that is that whilst you get a slightly noisier echo, um, when the echo goes into oscillation, when you turn the feedback up enough that it's, it's starting to almost oscillate, um, you get a much more pleasing kind of oscillation. It's a very washy, warm, crunchy kind of oscillation that, that I find really pleasing. Whereas if you have too much treble on there, you'll get an, a cleaner sounding echo. But when the echo goes into oscillation, it tends to sound a bit tinny. And, and I really don't like that. And I tend to, to do a lot of, when we use these live, I tend to do a lot of things where I'm, I'm turning up the feedback to make it go into oscillation and then playing with the time control to make weird sounds. And so I tend to have mine set up so that I've, I've kind of got that bass boosted a little bit and, and, and the treble kind of rolled down. There's also a post gain over here. You can turn that up to get more signal and it literally just boosts the signal after the feedback line so once the, the wet signal has been fed back to the tape already then it boosts the output so you can just get more level on the uh, on the output uh, personally i don't tend to use that uh, i know tom uh, our guitar player when he tunes uh, these machines up he, he likes to add a little bit of post gain on there and, and maybe roll down the volume on the cassette machine on the uh, the little volume wheel on the cassette machine um, and you so you can do some gain stage balancing like that and, uh, and balance that up with the um, with the treble and bass controls there, and just and just see what kind of uh, different sounds you can get from the machine. But uh, that that's pretty much it for this test. We've kind of shown that everything is working as it should do. The next thing I'm going to do with this machine is just take this loop out and replace it, and try to get rid of some of that click. But um, but yeah, we've we've shown that everything works, so I'm going to move on.